Greetings everyone, Kenji here and this is Life of Clay. Welcome back to my channel and also to all our new viewers out there. And today, I will be making this Goliath Bird Eater Theraposa Blondie. And if you like my tutorials like this one, please subscribe and click that bell icon for you to be notified whenever a new video is up. So without further ado, come on, bring the clay on, and let's begin. As part of my planning, I start a simple drawing so I can fully check all her body parts, like on how many joints her legs has. Forming a aluminum foil for armature and make it dense using hammer and cover it with masking tape. I inserted a 3mm aluminum wire to add reinforcement to the body and tie a string in the connection of the abdomen and cephalothorax. Cover it with clay and start forming the abdomen shape first. Trim off the excess and adding more clay to the area where it needs. And as I got the final shape, I start adding details of fine hairs. Adding a small oval shape of clay to be her book lungs. These are the spider's main respiratory organs or let's say their nose. Adding her epigen or the external structure of a female spider. And yes, this tarantula is a she. Adding her anus and spinneret sockets. Poking the abdomen all around using a needle, hairs will be inserted in these holes later. Brush it with alcohol and do the first baking. And now let's form the cephalothorax. Cephalothorax is the fused head and thorax of spider and other arthropods. Adding shallow canal like lines on the carapace and adding the spider's fang sockets. Adding the separation line between carapace and her ventral parts. And adding the eyes. I am now scooping the underside of the cephalothorax to give room for the coxa or the first joints of her legs. I rolled out a noodle of clay and cut into pieces making one end a little bit narrow than the other. Cover them with plastic wrap and do the shaping. I poke its joints so drilling will be easy later.
brush it with alcohol and do the second baking. Do the drilling and prepare the wires for the legs. I file a 3mm aluminum wire to make it pointy and this will be her chelicera and fangs. And let's start sculpting her pedipalps by covering the wire with clay, trimming, shaping, adding joints, and poking for the hairs to be added later. Next is her chelicera. Same method is applied. They have gigantic fangs of 1.57 inches. They have venom but relatively harmless and yet still be careful for she can give you a nasty bite. I sculpted only one leg and decided to make molding to lessen the working hours. For a one leg, Took one and a half hours to make, but the molded one takes only 20 minutes to shape. And then again, same method is applied. The Goliath bird eater, Theraposa blondi, belongs to the tarantula family, Theraposidae. Found in northern South America, it is the largest spider in the world by mass 175 grams and body length of 13 cm or 5.1 inches, but it is second to the giant huntsman spider by leg span. Despite its name, it rarely preys on birds, and with an average lifespan of 15 to 25 years. And for the mold making, I use the basic homemade silicone and cornstarch molding mix, adding droplets of black acrylic paint to add color. Place them on top of a tile and start molding them, pressing them properly to record all the details and set aside for 2 hours for curing. I'm so happy with the result of my first time silicone mold, but I decided to do the other half of the mold as well. And of course, errors happen that even I dusted cornstarch on the surface of the cured half, it is still stick and my plan for those indentations I added before to use as a guide was totally lost, but they are still useful anyway. I am now carefully cutting the mold to separate and avoiding the legs to damage. I sandwich the wire with two strips of clay and place the other half of the mold over and press. Trim off the excess, I repeatedly molding each leg until I achieve the proper shape and just did some retouching and poking. And 
Now I'm making her spinnerets using a more thinner bronze wire. Cover them with clay and adding segments. And now it's time for assembling. I use two parts industrial epoxy in attaching all the parts. I love using it due to its pasty texture that fills all the gaps in between the connections. And for the painting process, I use burnt shenna and burnt amber mix for the first coating. Adjusting burnt amber for more darker mix and I add it in some areas. Painting the eyes and fangs with black. For all the whitish patterns of her body and legs, I mix titanium white, raw shenna, and burnt amber. And for the painstaking job, adding fine hairs one by one, attaching them using glue. These fine hairs are made out of a old painting brush, nylon brush to be exact. I can choose to brush this spider with varnish and just sprinkle these fine hairs over, but that method does not look so convincing and realistic, so I choose to do the hard way instead but brings out a more better result. As one of their defense, they rub their abdomen with their hind legs and release hairs and cause severe irritant to skin and mucous membrane. This urticating hair is harmful to humans. Finally, after 6 hours, all hairs are pinned and it's time to seal it with a kiss, I mean varnish. I use matte for this spider since the natural one is not as shiny as other species of spiders. And adding gloss varnish for the eyes and fangs. And there you go, our Goliath bird eater spider is finally done. Isn't she adorable? Hope that you like this tutorial guys and enjoy the lengthy process at the same time. Stay tuned for more upcoming tutorial and please leave your suggestions or requests in the comment section below and would love to consider them. Thank you so much everyone, have a wonderful day.